Hey everybody, this is Dust for Dust of Dawn Gaming with match number three, episode one of Just Guy Miracles in Modern here. As a friendly reminder, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, consider giving us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and leave a constructive comment down below. So, quick deck tech for the replay we're about to do. It was actually the first of the three matches I ended up playing with Just Guy that night, but um, I'm recording this one last because it's a replay as opposed to live. So, Just Guy Miracles, uh, it's a bolt take on Blue White Miracles, if you're not familiar with the archetype. Um, you're playing Jace, Teferi, along with Terminus to try to get rid of your opponent's creatures. Um, gets around indestructibility effects, gets around um, persist effects and such, puts it on the bottom of your deck. Uh, for the most part, this is a positive. Um, setting up the Miracle can be a little bit difficult sometimes. We had a couple, couple times... In the Spirits matchup where Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God or Settle the Wreckage would simply have been better. Like more traditional Just Guy and Jace and Terminus obviously make the deck a little bit more clunky in some of those matchups. So there are some downsides to playing the Miracles cards. You also play Opt over some of the other choices to have access to instant speed Terminuses on your opponent's turn. Um, this particular build, we've noticed a couple of things. Um, going down to two bolts has been a real cost, so maybe one of these logic knots or fourth cryptic commands need to go. Uh, but beyond that, you know, it's your usual Celestial Colony and Field of Ruin, three color mana base, a bunch of fetch lands. Uh, running two planes, to be able to hard cast pretty much everything in our deck through a Blood Moon and such. Um, one basic mountain to go fetch with your Field of Ruins and Path to Exiles you come across. Uh, three islands to be able to cast cryptic command through a Blood Moon, in theory at least. Uh, beyond that, you've got Bolts, Helixes, and Pass, which makes this deck a little bit better than traditional blue-white against creature decks, although blue-white's no slouch when it comes to creature decks. Uh, Cryptic Command, Logic Knot, deal with your opponent's cells, Search for Escanta and Teferi, along with Jace to be card advantage engines, Snapcaster Mage, kind of tie it all together, and that's pretty much Control Deck in Modern. Uh, sideboard, uh, got various things to bring in against various matchups. Stony Silence comes in against the War decks and against Hardened Scales and Affinity. Also can come in against Tron. Timely Reinforcements, primarily here for Burn, can come in in other aggressive matchups. Uh, Baneslayer, Angel, and Lyra are here for the mid-range and controlling matchups when you need an additional threat. Also can come in against the aggro decks. Uh, Negate pretty much hits almost every relevant spell in the format that your bolts pass and Helixes can't deal with. Vendillion Click, you know, anything from anything from Planeswalkers and such to Storm to pretty much anything, you know, hits Karn, hits so many things in the format, can almost consider main decking Negate if you're not a huge fan of cards like Logic Knot and such. Uh, Vanillion Click comes in when you need a little bit of additional threats, um, disrupts your opponent, you know, can click them during the draw step, can click them during their end step, um, disrupt what they're trying to do, you know, break a hole in their curve take away a problematic card like a Blood Moon or a, you know anything like that, a Liliana of the Veil that can be difficult to deal with. Uh, surgical Extraction for Graveyard decks, I think mean, because decks like Dredge, Storm, etc. can be tough matchups unless you have abilities to break up their key pieces. And then Damping Sphere, a little bit less relevant without KCI in the format now, but you still have Storm, Amulet, <clears throat> Tron, a lot of different decks this disrupts on different axes. Also coming against Cheerios when you see that on occasion, which I've run into ironically. And Damping Sphere is a very good card in that matchup. So, that being said, let's get into some control on control violence, shall we? Everybody's favorite, Troll Mirror. Actually, it's a Just Guy on Just Guy matchup, which I think um, some of the mis some of the plays on both players' parts warrant some discussions. It's part of the reason I'm doing the replay. So we're on the play. Um, this hand's pretty acceptable. Got a couple copies of Opt. Um, a couple Planeswalkers here. in a Lightning Helix that we can cast with our current lands. So, pretty good hand overall. Um, better if it's a creature matchup with a Lightning Helix, but still not a terrible hand against an unknown opponent. Let's lead on that, because I plan on opting to try to find lands. Opponent shocks in. I wasn't sure at this point if we're dealing with, um, like, could be the Phoenix decks at this point. Um, this could be, like, Blue Red Wizards, could be Storm. You know, there's a lot of decks that are going to shock in a land to cast Opt. But, just go ahead and play Flood Strand here. Opponent Ops, they shock in. 
Let's go ahead and cast Opt. Our opponent Lightning Helix is us, so now we know we're up against a Control Mirror. A lot of nothing going on here for a couple turns. It electrolyzes us, so we're up against the more traditional... Actually, that Roman makes me think, and I don't think we actually ever saw it out of them, that Roman makes me think they might be the Jeskai Breach deck that recently did well in, a, I think it was a Modern Challenge. Just kind of fast-forwarding through this, because, you know, not a whole lot. Punt tries to jam a Jace here. Unfortunately, it resolves. We go Snapcaster, Lightning Helix, or Jace... Expecting them to have some answer to their thing, but obviously they don't, so we just jam a Jace of our own. Put a card of our own to the bottom here, since opponent has Field of Ruin if they really wanted to. At this point, all we're trying to do is chip shot our opponent and just start to bury them in card advantage. They have a search for his Kanta here, which is fine get rid of that path that we bend off the Jace. And basically at this point we're just trying to set up to burn our opponent out or win with Jace's overwhelming card advantage. See, our opponent makes a mistake here. They go to Field of Runus in response to the Bolt, getting rid of this. So they have a Bolt on the stack. We Helix them in response. Helix them again. The problem is they only have... Um, this mana up right now, they only have maybe a mana leak would be the best thing for them. This would put them to four, this would put them to one. And we have a Snapcaster on board. So, a little bit of weird timing on their part with the Field of Ruin. It opened it up, plus we have the Snapcaster Mage once the bolt resolves to kind of finish them off. So, we must not have had anything here. Um, best thing they could get would be like an island off this Field of Ruin to have like a Logic Knot up. And even at that point, they're they're dropping to, what, one at best case scenario. So, careful when you're end-stepping against any control deck. Um, when both decks are playing at instant speed, it's a little, little sketch sometimes. I mean, granted, it's kind of hard to expect us to have Lightning Helix, Lightning Helix, Lightning Bolt, and Snapcaster Mage. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is where mana advantage also comes into play in the control mirror. So, a couple different things here with the control mirror. Um, mana advantage can be crucial, and particularly in the Jeskai mirror, you can always get burned out. I mean, there's lightning bolts, there's snapcaster mages, there's lightning helixes. You know, our opponent threw their, all their burn spells early at our face, really doesn't do a whole lot to throw a piecemeal burn at your opponent's face unless you you have a very good chance of burning them out over a couple turns because you never know when a snapcaster range is going to come down and kill your jace um you know if they would have kept one of these electrolyzes or lightning helixes their jace might have been still alive or we would have had to throw another burn spell at it so it can be very crucial to um sequence correctly in the control mirror understand what the key cards are um, usually it's Jace, Teferi, um, beyond that, the burn spells and such aren't really relevant. This Remand is the one thing that makes me think that they're on the Through the Breach version, so. But we never end up seeing Through the Breach, so I'm not quite sure 100% if they were on the Through the Breach version or not. And Jace was a little weird in what looked like a more traditional Just Guy list. Um, with Electrolyze usually indicates they don't have Terminus in the list because you can't afford to play it. Us Hand's fine in the Control Mirror. Got a couple copies of Opt and a Cryptic Command. As far as sideboarding, obviously board out the four Terminuses. Um, boarded out a couple of paths, left in all the bolts and such. Um, also boarded in the gates, so I boarded in the two negates. The two angels and the two Vendillion clicks, because you want more threats. Um, sometimes they're boarding out some amount of their removal as well. So, go ahead and keep this. Put it just taps our land in. We shock in because we want to cast Opt here. Keep Banslayer because threats are nice, and then we immediately draw Lyra, which is entertaining. Our opponent, once again, going with the 
aggressive burn plan here. This Kanto resolves. Of course, we find logic not off of it. So, we're a little bit under the clock with them having an active as Kanto going. Um, I'm going to play a Snapcaster and Bolt. Which is fine. We go to eat, which is a little bit risky, so our opponent's trying to... Here, I'm trying to bounce their land, set them back on mana a little bit, to make it more difficult for them to fight through. And I just jam a Band Slayer, hoping they don't have another copy of uh, Lightning Bowl or something, and they're down to one red source anyway, so they can't burn us out over one turn period. Here, our opponent, part of the reason I jammed the Bane Slayer was our opponent cast Path to Exile on their own um, Snapcaster Mage, so they weren't set back on lands. The fact that they're bouncing this Bane Slayer here is kind of nice for us. Um, it, like, taps them out. Uh, go ahead and Lightning Helix them main phase to avoid being vulnerable to, yeah. But there's a good chance we could have been dead there if our opponent... Add another red source. And obviously, we have the counter spells that they would have to fight through. But with an additional red source, it would have been dangerous. And they have dispels in their deck. So we start chip shotting with snapcasters. And they're obliged to leave up counter magic if they have it because they don't want to lose to. Um, they're trying to keep our life total low. Fortunately, we're drawing a lot of Snapcaster Mages and a lot of Lightning Helixes. So, use Logic Knot to counter this. They have Dispel. Okay, they get a Snapcaster Mage that can no longer really be relevant here. Use Helix on the Snapcaster. <clears throat> so we have a life buffer, two creatures in play. They're forced to tap out for their own Angel. Go ahead and cryptic bounce it. Put them to one here. They play the angel again. And we bolt them. They have no answer. So both players look like they were trying to do something similar. Uh, they landed a search for us canta, so that was part of the reason I was being more aggressive in game two. Um like normally I don't like to be that aggressive in the control mirror, even in a Jeskai on Jeskai matchup, but knowing that they had the Search for his Canton in play as kind of their source of card advantage, um, I was jamming, forcing them, you know, p forcing them to pick up a land with Cryptic Command. Um, Cryptic Command's a really, really flexible card, and one of the things as control that you learn to, as you play the deck more and more, is just how, like, flexible and awesome the card can be, and many different applications you can have for the card. Um, the last time I played the deck in paper was in the ICG Invitational Year 2, um, and I played against Tron. Basically, my <laughs> cryptic commands became upkeep, bounce one of your Tron pieces, keeping you from hitting five lands to be able to crack your O-Stone. So, this happened like two or three times, and I was able to kind of tempo them out with Snapcasters and Burn Spells. So... Cryptic Command's not always counter draw, tap draw. Sometimes it's bounce a key permanent. Sometimes it's bounce a land, set your opponent back a land. Um, you know, sometimes boomerang on a land is better than any other mode, even if it costs you four mana. Especially when your boomerang is drawing you a card, that's not necessarily a terrible thing. I mean, look at, uh, what's the name of the card? A blink of an eye in standard. I mean, that bouncing permanence. There's a reason that specifically says non-land permanence. Because, you know, boomeranging your opponent while... Or boomeranging an opponent's land while drawing a card can be pretty brutal on, like, turn three or four, even in a format like standard. So, um... You know, pretty important to understand your role. I was... I had to be the aggressive deck because they had as Kanta going, um... You know, they got us to a low life total, we were able to Helix our way back. So this was another matchup where the fourth copy of Helix was quite nice. I still think um, 
The third copy of Lightning Bolt, someone suggested at least running a third copy of Bolt, I think, over the fourth crypt command is probably correct. Either that or the logic knot. Um, two Jaces has felt fine. I think two Jace, two Search, two Teferi is probably a good source, of good enough thing of card advantage in addition to Snapcasters and Cryptics. So I think I'd probably cut, for now, try cutting one of the logic knots and running the third Bolt again. But could be right to have... 3 knot, 3 cryptic, 3 bolt. So, a lot of different, you know, customizations with control. Um, you know, definitely going to be run, running back control again shortly here. But for now, we need to get back to playing more burn, because that's what the channel is mostly about. So, just want to say thank you for everyone tuning in. This has been Desk for Dustin on Gaming. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.